This over here is my first Z890 motherboard that I'm going to check out or I have had my hands on. So we're going to check out what is actually new with the Z890, Core Ultra support and a lot more. This is Gigabyte Aorus X Elite Ice. Licensing Windows is cheap and easy with whokeys.com and if you use the code TN20, you get an extra discount. <laughs> Complete the purchase, copy the key and paste it to the activation settings. And you're all done! Also check out their Microsoft Office 19 license and use the same code TN20 for the extra discount. Check out whokeys.com in the video description below. Supports Intel Core Ultra Processors Series 2. Alrighty then. Alrighty then. Certain motherboard vendors actually put the Wi-Fi antenna in there, but this is just for packaging so it doesn't flop around. Look at the Wi-Fi connector, so there's no screws, literally just chop it in. We're gonna see that in a minute. And a nice little uh, design for this. I hope this is magnetic. This is a temperature sensor. This is a microphone sensor, so you can actually put this in and let the motherboard listen to some of the audio. By audio, we mean just the noise and adjust certain levels of the fans and pumps by noise to keep your PC quiet. We've got white SATA cables to match the motherboard team, two of them. One of them is angled, one of them isn't, by the way. Then another temperature sensor, some installation guides, but no full manual here. Front panel connector, so you can easily plug everything in and then put it on the motherboard. And some aura stickers. Okay, look at the motherboard design. This is beautiful. It's white and a bit of a silvery look, so if you're doing a white-themed build, this is going to be one of the best contenders for the Ultra 200S series themes. We've got pretty good heat sinks for all the VRMs. There's heat pipe that goes through there as well. Gigabyte says it is 16 plus 1 plus 2 twin digital VRM design. It's plenty for everything really. For creators, it's plenty because you're not going to do overclocking. For overclocking, it's still pretty much good for, you know, what you're going to be doing. By the way, if you want to check this motherboard out, as always, the links are in the description below. And if you haven't liked the video yet, hit that like button, subscribe if you enjoy videos like this. Let's take a look at some of the motherboard headers and connectors and what do we see here, because some of the things are new and I'm liking this. So we've got one fan header on the top there. I'm glad they moved it from somewhere bottom there, which usually is for the back fan that is over here onto the top left corner because you can easily hide the cable easier down there because otherwise the cable would cable would be just like kind of hanging on the GPU somewhere. It's a bit better place there, I believe. Then we've got two 8-pin EPS or CPU connectors. Then we've got CPU optional and CPU fan for your fan or CPU fan headers. 5-volt ARGB header. We've got a power button, reset button and QF plus button. I believe the QF plus is for flashing the BIOS if you put it into the right USB slot on the back of the motherboard. Then we've got a Dr. Debug in here, which is really nice to see. So you actually see the error codes as well as the lights for booting. So we have the CPU, VGA, RAM and boot. 24 pin ATX power supply, two more fan headers on the side here then two temperature headers just next to them over there. So the ones that you saw in the box, you can put them in there. Then we have the DB Sense, which is the decibel header. Remember the tiny little microphone that was in the box? You're gonna plug it into there. We have front panel USB-C, and this is 20 gigabits in speed. So USB 3.2 Gen 2 X2 slot. Now, this is interesting. We have HDMI header just over here and you're wondering why on earth do you have a hdmi header over there and i'm very glad that this is there you know more and more we see different cases and different products that offer you system stats or let's say cpu ram and other utilization and temperatures like little screens inside a pc case or outside the case and then you're gonna have to figure out some absolute diy to actually get the signal to that screen but now you can just have a video out inside the case plug in the cables and have the screen in the case hidden and show some of the stats. Then we've got a front panel USB type A header, which are five gigabits in speed, four SATA headers in here, front panel headers in there, and then another reset switch in there for just, if you connect these two pins together, then it's reset. And then these two are clip for clear seamless. Another three fan headers. Then we've got two USB 2.0 headers here, TPM header, one 12 volt ARGB header, and then two more 5 volt ARGB headers. This here is the LED demo. So if you're putting this motherboard on a shelf somewhere or on a 
you know, display. If you're a shop or something like that, you can plug this into a power bank or some kind of power outlet, and then it will show the LEDs what's going on in there. I wish I had this cable so I could show you. Then we've got a front panel audio header just there. Now, in terms of the socket, it's changed. It's the LGA 1851 socket as you can see in here. Now what Intel's done with now the LGA 1851 socket is, if you remember the bending issues everywhere, now what they're saying is this is an RLILM, so reduced load mechanism basically. So you can actually feel it. So when you plug in this in, this is not gonna put as much pressure on the CPU as it did before because it's not required. It's very, very easy, but Obviously this bit is still hard because you want to lock the CPU in. So they've reduced the load. So hopefully that's not going to bend your CPUs anymore. Secondly, we've got DDR5 slots, four slots, and this supports very, very fast RAM. So this is one of the nicest things that's upgraded with the Core Ultra 200S series. We've got much better RAM support. And I think Intel's going to be industry leading and probably going to do some world records with the fastest RAM overclocking. Now, let's take a look at the M.2 slots. And one of the things you straight away see is the easy mechanism. They've put basically no screws to actually install any M.2 slots. So we just open this there and then this heatsink comes up. You lift it off and look at that. Thermal pad on the top with a heatsink and on the bottom with a little heatsink on the bottom as well. And then this big slab comes off here as well. Just open it up, pull it up, and then very easily removable. So we can see there's four heatsinks in there. And then there's the, these two top slots here that also support 110 millimeter SSDs. And then the rest of them only 80 millimeters. None of them have bottom thermal pads only on the top. This is the new chipset and the heatsink for the chipset in there. So let's talk about the M.2s. This top slot is PCIe Gen 5. Then we've got PCIe Gen 4 for M.2s. So PCA Gen 4, PCA Gen 4, PCA Gen 4, and PCA Gen 4. These are all PCA Gen 4 X4 slots, so you have five M.2s all together, which is absolutely amazing. As a creator, I love to see lots of these storage options. And even the M.2 installation here is very straightforward. So let's say we're going to plug something into here, and you don't require any screws, just pop it in there. I'm liking this. Now, this is not necessarily new, but what's new is that you don't require any screws to install any of the M.2. Sometimes the top heat sinks need still like some screws or you had an easy one for the top and then still the screws for the bottom ones. But right now, nothing there. By the way, anyone still rocking this one? The Samsung 950 Pro? Okay, PCIe slots here. The top slot is armored and durable and there's extra support on the back there as well. So if you look at the back of the motherboard, the top slot has this. There's nothing else on the back there, no headers, no, nothing. So this is strong to even hang your 5090 if you're going to go for this. And there is actually a four slot spacing between the first one and then the next one. So you can put a very, very thick GPU in there and still utilize some of the bottom ones for, you know, some add on cards like network cards or capture cards or something like that that you might want to put in there. This is PCA Gen 5. X16, so you're gonna get full bandwidth there. I don't think even that the 5090 is gonna use or utilize all of the Gen 5 16 lanes because it's, it's so much bandwidth. And these two will go directly to the CPU. Then there's two more extra PCIe expansion slots. One of them here is PCI Gen 4 X4, which is the top slot, and then the bottom one, a PCI Gen 4 X1 slot. so nice to put them back so easily. Let's take a look at the IO here. And first thing I want to do is try this Wi-Fi antenna. As you can see, it just should plug in and voila, your antenna is installed. So we have four USB 2.0 headers on the top, four USB 3.2 headers in here, and the blue ones are five gigabits in speed. Then the red ones are 10 gigabits in speed, another two. Then we have one Thunderbolt 4 port, and then one 2.5 gigabit LAN port. This is Wi-Fi 7 and Bluetooth 5.4. Optical out, mic, line out. Interestingly, there's no iGPU video out. Obviously, the Thunderbolt will support that, but they've moved the video out port from the back there 
to the side so you can actually use it for some of the internal like screens which is a very like gaming kind of a direction that they've gone with this as a creator i'm still excited about this but i would still love more video outputs in there as well just in case okay that's the motherboard if you want me to check out any other motherboards from gigabyte let me know in the comment section below and i'll see you in the next video bye bye